Hello my friends and welcome, this is the latest update from Ukraine. If you see something blue, it means that we have the good news from the front lines. Near to Ivanovka and close to Yahidne, Ukraine propelled forward just today. And let's see the update of the military map. Yesterday, and it is today, the successful Ukrainian counterattack in this area. This is happening in the Kharkiv Oblast, before Russia took some part of the ground nearby to advance towards Kupensk in perspective. However, Ukraine now does everything to protect the Kupen city against the Russian further advancement. We have also the confirmation about the Ukrainian success from the other sources. Yet there is no update from the 3D map, so this is Ivanovka, Ukraine moved forward over here, taking this part of the ground. Around. As you can see, the terrain is different in this area, there are lots of the hills, valleys and the lakes in the place. For now, Ukraine just took the part of the fields, hopefully in the future our guys will go towards Yahidne to intercept this road. Russia still uses it for their supplies of the nearby villages. My friends, before we go to the Bakhmut area, let me tell you about the sponsor and the partner of my channel. It is the Atlas VPN. They have the awesome Black Friday deal. It is a unique offer that was made especially for my subscribers, where you may get the Atlas VPN Premium just for $149 per month, plus you'll obtain 12 months extra. It has military encryption standards, strongly securing your data and your devices from being reached by government, unwanted ads and also hackers. I use the VPN all of the time and for me personally, Atlas VPN is the best VPN out there. It has a security breach device monitoring feature, so it alerts me that someone tries to reach my device, then I use the public Wi-Fi. Then I see that message, I disconnect from that public Wi-Fi. Atlas VPN is very fast. It guarantees you the best streaming connection, then you watch movies on Netflix. And also by changing your virtual location, you may get access to watch all of the movies, all of the series on Netflix platform. So my friends, please check out my personal link in the video description just below or scan the QR code available on the screen where you may get the Auto Supreme Premium with a unique Black Friday discount that was made especially for my followers where you can get it for just $149 per month plus 12 months extra. It is the best offer on the market and also it is time limited, specially dedicated to Black Friday. So hurry up to join the club. All right, the south of Bakhmut, Klishivka. Unfortunately, our enemy moved a little in this place, taking more ground. The map shows that Russians took this territory, but it's fake. They are still over here, not able to cross the railroad towards the village. For now, Ukraine is able to stop them. Before, they tried to advance from the upper side over here, but now they move across the valley on the lower ground, just through this river. Because of the natural obstacle, I think Ukraine is capable to withstand the ground in Klishivka. There were hard battles for this village this summer, so hopefully Ukraine is able to hold. As you can see, Russia takes the initiative in many of the points of the front lines, but happily Ukraine is also taking the ground in some of the places. So this is the recent situation in Klishivka. Enemy gained this ground. Not good situation, but still not critical. About Avdivka, Russia stopped their assault attempts on the north part and also on the south, so now they advance towards Avdivka directly from this place. But they propel very slowly. Yesterday it was like that, and today we have the clarification that they've took this part of this settlement under their control. And this is the satellite image of the eastern side of Ukraine, you may see, Lots of the snow already in the fields. The weather is cold nowadays. And those are the conditions for our warriors who sleep in the trenches. It's very cold, so our guys do everything to warm up a little in those terrible conditions inside the trenches. Unfortunately, sometimes soldiers have to spend even days at the same position. Good news from the south, the Russian rocket artillery system Grad was targeted by the Hamer's missile. It happened over here, quite far away behind Aleshkin, near to Kosta Hrizova village, so Russia uses Grad's and other rocket artillery systems to target 
our positions near Antonovsky Bridge nearby Aleshki. But the Ukrainian army is using the surveillance drone to identify the positions of the Russian armed forces, their vehicles, and as you can see, quite successfully. The video from legendary Magyar, they found a T-90M tank which was firing uh, from its gun just in the forest. I believe it's also the Liman direction. Recently Ukraine got the success over there and this tank was targeted with the help of the FPV drone and Russia lost it. So those are the remains of the tank. The grill on top didn't help. Russia sent more of the Chinese all-terrain vehicles to the front lines. They even put the machine gun on the top. I think it's quite useless because this vehicle has no armor protection, so it shouldn't be used to fight on the front lines rather than to deliver some of the goods and ammunition to artillery systems, not more than that. Maybe also for evacuation of the injured personnel, wounded personnel and other stuff. But this stuff is totally useless because you can just eliminate this thing with a simple pistol or whatever. When this car is spotted, it's no go for it. It should work behind the front lines. The drone war continues. This time the Ukrainian Mavic drone hit the Russian Matrix 300. What is very interesting that Mavic continued the normal flight after the impact and the Russian drone collapsed to the ground. So Mavic continued the normal operation because it's more light. It looks like the elite Russian paratroop divisions have tremendous losses on the south near to Novoprokopovka. Just recently, not long time ago, Russia sent them to defend that village. And here are the new graves which were spotted in Kostroma, Russia, with hundreds of the Russian VDV, so paratroop divisions, soldiers buried. We know it for sure because that flag is the flag of the Russian paratroopers and the graves are all fresh. This evening the kabooms were reported in Feodosia, the eastern side of Crimean Peninsula. Russia moved the part of their Black Sea Marine fleet to this bay because it's more safe as they think. Nevertheless, locals reported about the explosion sound. Also, as you probably know, yesterday Jankoy was attacked by Ukrainian drones. However, no evidence was presented of what was particularly targeted over there. Maybe Russian air defense worked. The Wall Street Journal says that China and Russia are looking to start the huge project to build the tunnel under the Kerch Strait to avoid using the Kerch Bridge, which is quite vulnerable under Ukrainian attacks. Well, actually, I think that it is possible with huge investments, because the distance from the shore to shore is just 11 miles, but still digging this tunnel might take years or even decades. By the way, today the chief of SBU, Maluk, gave the interview. Those are the special Ukrainian defense forces that claim the responsibility on attacking the Kirch Bridge. So they say that in the nearby future we should expect some interesting news about the Kirch Bridge. Honestly, I don't think that Russian-China tunnel project will be real. Alright, finally we have the video from Jankoy. So something is burning over there. This is the Russian military base. So for sure it was attacked, but what exactly was, what kind of units, maybe radars or air defense systems, unfortunately without the satellite image we are unable to state it, but the weather there is quite cloudy, so we shouldn't wait for the satellite images very soon. You probably know that some of the Polish activists are blocking the border with Ukraine. Ukrainian trucks are unable to go to Poland or come back to Ukraine, so our truck drivers are leaving their trucks in Poland and just walking back home. This blockade wasn't organized by the Polish government. Moreover, Polish government is opposing the current strikes. However, there is no prompt action from the Poland. They are not using any sort of the force against the strikers who are basically cutting all of the supplies for Ukraine, including humanitarian tracks. They also been blocked. So who is responsible for this kind of the madness? The guy named Rafal Mekler 
who is the leader of the Polish Confederation of Liberty and Independence. And they are basically the pro-Russian force in Poland. They even want to recognize Crimean Peninsula as the part of the Russian Federation. The leaders of the party even went to Crimean Peninsula before. The main Polish transport organizations are also not supporting this stuff. The drivers' unions in Poland also do not support it. So we see a few men in Poland which are fitted by the Russian money and they are managed by this pro-Russian party. Officially, they want to cancel the freedom for Ukrainian drivers to deliver the goods between the European Union countries. The European Union did it because the war had started in Ukraine and they want to support the Ukrainian companies. So those strikers are going to block the border till February. At least they announced that term. As you see, Russia again boils the relationship between Ukraine Ukraine and its allies. They want to burn the hatred between Poland and Ukraine. Before, there were narratives also from this party that Ukrainians have everything for free in Poland. They mean refugees. And Polish people are just feeding those lazy bones. So they want to burn this flame between the nations. And actually, what they do is partially successful. As you see, they were able to block the border with Ukraine. The Slovakian pro-Russian parties also wanted to join joined this flash mob with blocking the border, however, nothing happened over there. Unfortunately, Ukraine has no levers to act on this current state, so it's up to Poland to resolve this issue. We need it to be resolved as soon as possible. Pakistan officially requested to join the BRICS bloc. Now there is Russia, China, India, South Africa and Brazil. So why it happened to Pakistan? because they got lots of the credits from China and unable to pay back. That is why China proposed Pakistan to join this interesting community. Recently, Argentinian new elected president said that Argentina will not join BRICS. As you can see, China wants to expand this BRICS bloc, which already includes the countries from all around the world, doesn't matter the location of those countries. For example, EU includes just the European countries. Here, it doesn't really matter for China. They want to include all of the countries into it. All of the countries which are okay with China and got lots of the Chinese credits, including the African countries. So we witness how China might expand in the future, creating some sort of the Soviet Union bloc. But Russia will be just a puppet there. Guys, a couple of days ago I shared the video on my channel showing how locals meet Ukrainian warriors who liberated the village of Krinky. And I was wrong, this information was shared by many of the sources claiming that it is the Krinky village, but this footage is very old from the last year that our guys liberated the northern part of Kherson Oblast, the right bank of the Dnipro river. So this is the old video, it was not happening in Krinky village. Unfortunately, hopefully in the future Ukraine will go Further, in Krinky there are no people left because it's the active war zone. The news from the Middle East, there was the exchange of the hostages today. It is a great achievement, so finally Qatar is the good mediator in this hostages exchange deal. But still, it is early to say about the full exchange of all of the hostages. More photos of the Leopard 1A5 are coming right from the front lines. They are fresh because you can see the snow nearby. Well, hopefully those tanks will be used accordingly because they are quite vulnerable against the Russian tanks and even some of the armored vehicles because they have much less armor protection compared to Leopard 2. And this is the Swedish CV-90, also was spotted not far away from the Bakhmut. Current photos very fresh. This photo was published on the Ukrainian social media accounts. As you can see, Ukraine tries to store the fighter jets in concrete hangars to avoid the drone strikes which might be performed by Russia using the Lancet drones. The Serbia-made mortar mines were spotted in Ukrainian army. Awesome, Serbia! Thank you for your support! It's not the first time that we see the munition from that country. Officially, they are friends with Russia, but they support Ukraine with weaponry. This photo was taken a couple of days ago in France. 
Here you can see four of the ships or the boats that will go to Ukrainian Navy. Ukraine ordered them before and the ships or the boats are ready to go. Hopefully they will arrive to Ukraine safely. Because I found those photos on the Russian resources and they published the name of the ship asking Russia to react on that delivery. My friends, please press the like to this video. By doing so, you help me a lot. Also, there is some link in the video description just below where you might find the Atlas VPN Premium with astonishing discount dedicated to the Black Friday. So it is the Black Friday deal and I highly recommend you to join it. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.